Hey, what's up you all? It's your dude Chris. I have autism here. Hit me well up once again with another video. This time, this time from my experience, I'm going to be talking about Elizabeth City, North Carolina life. This is from my experience living here and what, was, what it's like and what it was like growing up and how things have changed. Now, um, I remember the first time moving here was during the early 90s. I'm going to say 91. Um, was, uh, my mother was, was in her early 20s, was in her 20s and all. And um, at the time, she was going to college trying to find a job to support me and my brother. So we were staying with here at my grandmother's house for the time being. And then when she got enough money to get her own place, we moved into a trailer in a little area called Weeksville. Well, actually, it's not so little. It's actually stretches for miles. But yeah, Weeksville is really much, very much out in the country, very Southern-like. Um, there's even old gas stations that's been around for like ever. And I can remember just passing by it every time. It is very much out there in the country. I should you not. Wooden shack, gas stations. Um, for stretches of miles, it's just fields and trees and swampy areas. And a lot of uh, mills and and uh, warehouses. Yeah, it's con it's southern, it's country, and you would know it when you were if you were cruising around there. You would know where you it, it was southern, because the whole atmosphere says it all. There was even docking parts for boats, docking places for boats. I mean, um, one of the most uh, phenomenal things that will happen out in the country is that since it was an open area um a lot of times it was dark very little to no light at all but it would actually a comet would pass by strike down you would actually see it illuminate um plenty of churches I'll tell you that much and these churches were like big and massive, beautiful looking churches. And you knew, I mean, I mean, everything about it. It's just country southern stuff. You had churches, you had your old gas stations. And this is really out there. Because Lupus City is, is you know, it's more of the... Uh, boating life of uh, things you you talk about being near the waterfront you got a beautiful view on the horizon faced off to the, the I think the east yeah so you get a good glance of the sunset if you were there early enough um which um, honestly I've never been there in the early in the mornings um but I have walked over there plenty of times you don't think somebody as fat as myself could be capable of performing such physical tasks, but you'd be wrong. I do lots of walking, y'all. Despite how big I am, I do, I probably do, I do a lot more walking than most people that I know. Because I don't even drive, never did. And I could just say, oh, that's because of my autism, my intellectual disability, that I wasn't able to get the opportunity to drive because I was just trying to get caught up in other academical stuff during my time in school. But being that I'm a 33-year-old man now, looking back at this, there's times I wish I did try to initiate, but then I'm kind of glad I didn't try to because I was able to get other things out of the way. I could, I was able to go to college, attend for attend a program there called the AWARE program which helped special needs people such as myself get caught up in academics 
and I got caught up to the point to where I was actually able to take regular courses there, but unfortunately ended up having to drop out due to low due to making a low grade point average. But I'm glad, nevertheless, I was glad to go there because I got to met, meet some really nice people, some really good teachers. They were the best teachers, and I think I've learned I've made more improvement at that community college at COA than I have made anywhere else academically. Because everybody there was there to learn, and people were there. Now, I've met some of the most most nicest down to earth people made friends with the most nice people one of the most greatest people you'd ever know it was just a great experience we laughed we joked we I remember this uh, girl what's her name Brittany uh, Brittany Will, what's her name uh, Brittany Williams yes and Keith not yeah Keith I forgot his last name, but I haven't seen him in a while. They live somewhere else. I think they live somewhere down in Edenton or something. But it was awesome. And I do miss that because I think Brittany Williams and Keith were probably the most uh, close. They're probably, I, I became really socially, I became close, really close with them. I mean, I became really good friends with them real fast. It just it was just like that. We were talking, laughing, joking. I mean, this is a friendship that you that would never die. And me and Brittany were at the point to where we were like, okay, we were actually, I was, we were at the point to where we were actually going to date. I shit you not. But I kind of refused to date her because I, because at the time I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, and I wasn't quite sure. If I wanted to settle down with the person, because there were other girls too that other women too and all girls that I was, you know, really trying to get to know that I was interested in, and I wasn't quite sure who I wanted to be with or what I wanted to do, and I was still in the process of figuring out what I wanted to do with my life, and I got caught so caught up in trying to figure out what to do that I never got around to doing much at all. And it's and it quite saddens me that, you know, it never got anywhere. But at the same time, I kind of got somewhere in a sense, you know. I got to do things that I would have never done. Got to meet new people. And it was a great experience. And, and in elementary school, very interesting. Greatest, got some great teachers too, but there was some line of discrimination amongst some of the t some uh so in some situations some teachers like i kind of felt that way because like a student like i always always been the class clown and if some one student did the same thing that i was doing in the exact same manner that we weren't supposed to do like saying things we weren't supposed to say, then she would stick up for her students. But seeing that they mean that I was a student of another class, yeah, we were. Uh, there was two special needs classes in River Road Middle School that were across from one another, and she was, of course, she would side with her students rather than discipline them, let them have a free pass. But oh, she would, she would be riding on my ass. Doesn't matter if the other person was doing the same exact thing. I'll let them slide, but let me burn. Because whatever, you know. And the thing is, these are some... We're talking about the people that you'll know, very narrow-minded people. And, and the display of behavior, if, of, you know, if you're joking about, you know, something along the lines that they don't approve, like, you know, trying to joke about, you know, trying to pretend to be gay just to be funny or whatever, make gay jokes and all. They they thought they don't like it. These are very narrow-minded people. It's anything they hate more is that kind of behavior. Anything displaying any homophobia and any homo or, or whatever. And I honestly, I, I would say I'm not, I don't go down like that.
you know, because, you know, I mean, I've had a girlfriend in middle school. We, we went off and on. And and we 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 didn't want to admit it, but we only liked each other for one reason. And that was just for it was for uh well how else do I put it? it we just liked each other for um our bodies. Let's just put it that way. We didn't have a love connection, it was a lust connection. Because we were two teenagers going through through um the stages, the changes. Kind of very similar to that of Big Mouth. You ever watch that cartoon anime series Big Mouth on Netflix? Yeah. It was kind of, it was just the epitome of that, you know, just joking around, acting funny, doing sorts of things, you know, being a teenager, having to clear up the acne, you know, and one of the worst things to go through as a teenager. And then just going through these phases and the changes of puberty and whatnot. And what made it worse for me, unpleasurable wise, is having a bus monitor with a bus driver because it's a special needs bus. And normally a bus bus would not have a bus monitor, a regular bus would just have a bus driver. But of course with the special needs, you always got to have a bus monitor because with special needs people... It can things could easily get out of hand, you know. You got people who have different medical problems like seizures and hand or other handicaps and intellectual disabilities, mental disabilities that could potentially become harmful to them as well as harmful to others if things got out of hand, if one got angry and lost their shit, they would have to have a bus monitor to go over there and handle it. Because you know, bus driver can't do everything but drive, you know, while doing her his job. And uh, being that I was the class clown and, and just like joking around and all, it was, eyes were always on me. And if there was any time I wanted to be alone with somebody that I, that I liked, couldn't do that. Not on the bus. No, bus monitor's watching you. Bus monitor's there. Like, what the hell's going on? What's going on back there? Are you behaving yourself back there? You better not be doing that. I'm watching you. I've got my eyes on you. You see? <laughs> oh, yeah. And it was real annoying. And and I couldn't... Uh, and, I, and I couldn't wait, wait to see the day I would never have to ride that dreadful, wretched bus ever again. And that was when I got into high school because, of course, I live across from the high school. I live literally live across from the high school I used to go to. Never had to take a bus ever again. And it was the greatest day of my life, the greatest feeling. I hated to have to take the bus. I hated it. Seats were uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable 24-7. It was just uncomfortable. Period. I absolutely hated it we didn't have I mean when I was growing up when, when I was on the bus we didn't have these it would have been more interesting if I had a a phone an iPhone to be recording on YouTube wasn't even a thing recording wasn't even a thing we didn't even have that stuff when I was growing up in high school we're talking about the early 2000s 2000 and 2000 from 2000 to 2003. You we were talking about the early 2000s. And it wouldn't be until like somewhat six or seven years later the iPhone would come out. <laughs> but I remember bringing a Game Boy Color with me. So that's one of the things we had. Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. That was the shit back then, y'all. You want to sell a portable? Bring your Game Boy Color. Are your Game Boy. Oh, that was all you had. You didn't have the phones, the iPhones. I couldn't go on the internet or whatever. But boy, if I had that stuff, 
it would have made such a fucking difference. I wouldn't have been so bored. Because I remember just drawing pictures up there and I would get sick. Get motion sickness after drawing pictures and that shit while the bus moved. Uh, oh. But no, if I had a phone and, and YouTube was a thing back then, oh, it would have been so much different. It would have changed the whole dynamics. And I probably wouldn't have been recording a lot of moments of the bus and we would have been joking around putting this shit on YouTube and what have you. Oh my god. Times have changed and I've watched it. I mean, things are just very different from when I was growing up. I was like 13, between 13 and 15 years old. 16. Well, it wasn't until when I got into high school. And that was like between 16 and 17 years old. It was, I was a little late getting into there, but. And late getting out. But it was, it was what it was. It was and they had plans for me when I started to show tremendous progress. Started put me in resource classes, taking half regular, half resource. And then at one point I skipped a grade because I was making such great progress. But then when I reached that level to where I was having to take computer apps classes, oh boy, that's when shit went, went downhill. And I had to fall back and then recap those years. I would have been out by 2004 or 5, but then oh, they said... If you want to graduate, you have to re-enter a program that just opened up. You could you have to do 300 can 300 something blah 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 hours of on campus, off campus hours, and what have you, and paid hours, and then you're done. But because of that time spent and no grades failed, I almost failed a grade. The lowest grade I made was probably a 70 or 75. But I was one of them made a bunch of B's. I made a three point one four I made it I was a B I was a straight B student let's just put it that way I was almost a straight B student I made a bunch of most of them 90 or 95 to 96 percent of my grades were just B pluses few of them were A's but uh, my grade point averages were pretty good they weren't 4.0s but they were 3.14s but which was um 1.194 which was a B. Because I looked on it on a scale to B. And speaking of which, let me go get it real quick. I think I have it in a folder somewhere that I kept up log or wrapped up. Oh yeah. Here it is. Oh my. Uh my grade point averages was a three point one nine four. So I was taking life skill, life skill science two, music appreciation, occupational prep two, A and two B, occupational prep three A and three B, OCS computer applications one, uh, occupational science life management, uh, career lab early release uh, from second and third block. Like 2007, 2008, I was only taking those two classes because I was just at that point to where I've done so much. Um, early released, no third block. Uh, the fourth block, I did English four, passed with a 95. And uh, occupational social studies two, passed with an 89. So I made it some pretty good grades. I mean, they weren't perfect, but they were pretty good. But if I were Asian, I would, I would be, I'd be shunned. If I were an Asian person, I would be shunned away from my family. I would be a disgrace because B's would never fly, and A minuses would never fly. You got to make A pluses. I'm only one quarter Filipino, so I grew up. Thank goodness. In a family that's not so uptight. Thank my lucky starve. <laughs> As I was taking uh, math, A math, I was taking a bunch of math classes and and uh, computers, occupational, 
computer applications and what have you. It was, it was, it was good. You know, I take English, English math and, and art and career management and health and physical education. Um, I take uh, digital communications and transitional math. Uh, took ceramics as well and um, life skills I've pushed blah 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 and physical weight and I did some physical weightlifting training I've done a 97 in that oh yeah baby oh I wasn't I wasn't necessarily the worst in class rank but I wasn't the best either I was far from being the worst, but further away from being the best. So I was ranked 78 out of 205. So that's a little less than half, but it's understandable. It's understandable given the fact that I have autism and a slight intellectual disability. So, I mean, that makes sense that I would be on that rank. But also it's impressive that I would even be far from being the worst but but still further from being the best but still given my status quo given all that it's, it's pretty good given the circumstances i gotta say but yeah that's a little filming up uh on there it's a little uh my storytelling but that's about it peace out y'all